oh, finally, she's transformed. I can finally knock down my, uh, I can finally not be so high pitched. Apparently that actually happens with, uh, uh, Abby's actual voice, like her voice lines when she changes to what is called her outer form, which is pretty much in it, her first, like, uh, her second look onward. She goes from being higher pitched to being a little bit more s deeper about it. So now I don't have to try as hard. And this hurts way less. <laughs> Alright team, we have a problem. <laughs> I have no cards for anyone except for Passion Lip. Oh boy, how long do these stay around for? Five turns? Cool. How about these ones? I think these only... Yeah. Uh, it's like death during normal attacks. Three turns. Three turns. Increased defense lasts for one turn. Uh, a flag no defense will increase. Okay, yeah. There we go. All right, Passion Lip, go to town. <laughs> Actually, uh, forget. How much can I get from you? Probably not a lot from this. I think it's only like 10. Yeah. All right, Kiara, you're up next. Please attack Mecha Ellie. Yes, thank you. I don't like how much charge gain you're getting. All right, showtime. All right, you could have gotten NP gain from that. I forgot you can do that. Uh, what does this do again? Recovery, NP gain, critical, strength. All right, nothing really much. All right, team, let's rock and roll. Alter Ego NP Roundabout! I mean, that was okay, I guess. Not the greatest. I actually think Kiara did more damage. But that's okay, because Mecha, cause Mecha Ellie's here is the one who's going to do the most damage. Since I don't have Melt Lilith, unfortunately, to be my single target attacker. Alright, that's very bad. That is very bad. I don't remember if she has her NP at this point or if she just does an extra attack, but I'm not taking any chances, so. We're just gonna not take any chances, because that sounds way better. Okay, it's just an extra attack then. All right, now we just got to batter her down. At least she's not dealing too much damage overall, I think. Oh, 
分さえします。はい、回避は許しません。Uh, let's see what have we got. Cool, perfect. I keep forgetting she has that skill. I should probably use that skill more often. Right, let's see if that buster up was enough to take down uh, Abigail. <laughs> you gotta be kidding me. 15 fucking health. All right, Passion Lip, take her down. <laughs> Thankfully, the battle ends after one health bar is broken. Still kind of a bullshit fight, because you don't know that that'll happen, and you also don't know what class she is, but thankfully, she still acts like her actual class, Foreigner. Which are weak to alter egos. Man, what's with the low fucking resolution on the... Or ro low, like, uh... Yeah, I guess resolution on the pictures there. Uh, weird. Alright. Oh, God. <laughs> the witches are fighting each other. Run away before they curse you. Did you see their twisted smiles? It was like the witches' Sabbath come to life. God damn it, she changed back. Abby. Abigail is back to normal. At least we kept her under control, but... <laughs> now the villagers are going to be more afraid than ever. Move aside. Don't dare resist. We're taking the witch into custody. You two wings, damned witch. I am not a witch. I am the queen witch. Hey, don't touch me. I can turn you into a dog, you know. Senpai, what are we going to do now? Huh? No, stop. Please don't take Senpai away. All up to you. Senpai... <laughs> Looks like it's you and me together this time, Vane. Didn't think I'd be doing time here again. I guess I should be grateful they didn't hang me on the spot. I'm really light, so hanging would be pretty long and painful death. I'm sorry, you just lost one of your friends. But hey, look on the bright side, Vane. At least you've got a beautiful girl here to keep you company. I slipped. I hate this place. I've had it up to here with this gel and its slippery, slimy floors. Here, let me sit on your lap for a bit, Vane. Hey, Vane. If you care about me at all, even just a little, what do you say we get out of here together? Now, I'm not talking about this jail. I can get out of here whenever I feel like it. No problem. I mean to the outside world, beyond Salem. Nah. Hey, wait a minute! You wouldn't happen to leave a ridiculously high tolerance for poison, would you? Or maybe a prosthetic leg? On second thought, never mind. Just forget about it. Pull out her feathers one by one. Stop! I'm sorry! Forgive me! That really hurts! Hang on. We have an unexpected visitor. Is that...? We threw them in the cell in the back. Don't worry, it's locked up tight. 
Oh, how kind of you. You shouldn't have. Okay, I'll let you have some privacy. If you need anything, just let me know. Thank you. It's Sanson. Nope, it's Carter. I was surprised. Well, well, well. Or should I say... Demon God Pillar. Wow, that's uh, surprising. I didn't think you would actually come out with it. When did you figure it out? I wasn't sure until you just told me. I see. Well, that's all right. You're my guest. That much hasn't changed. As your host, the very least I can do is give you a warm welcome. In fact, I came here to thank you for pacifying my niece after she gave everyone such a fright. No problem. Seemed a fitting show of gratitude after all I hear your kin did for my niece. Is it so strange? I'm far from the first demon god pillar to raise a human. And my own special trait comes from towns, after all. That's why it doesn't bother me to present myself as human, or wear clothes, or to live in a house. In fact, I find it rather comforting. I suppose it would be fair to say that such things are precisely what led me to split from Goetia's consciousness. They feared death too much, to the point that they became fixated on it. I'm not like Fornius or Hagente. Nor do my values align with any of the other members of the five envoys. Namely, Bazel, Zapar, Andras, and Phoenix. Now then, is there anything else you'd like to discuss? Why are you here, Mr. Creepy Red Glowy Eyes? I want you to understand my objective. Knowing will help you make a more rational decision. Decision. More like it'll help you manipulate us better. Why not tell us all this from the start, hmm? Because I failed with that batch. But now, the time is right for me to tell you the truth. <laughs> like you'd tell us any truth that might not further your own goals. Don't listen to anything he says, Vane. That's the best thing you can do here. Otherwise, you'll fall into the same trap as the Queen of Sheba, one of your own making. I am trying to save her. I promise you that much from the bottom of my heart. It's not what I clicked, but okay. Vain? Our Goetia's objective was to save mankind. That has been true ever since we were born. That is precisely why Salem and Abigail Williams were chosen. Salem is positioned on the border of sanity and madness. The wisdom of the modern age and the darkness of the Middle Ages are so closely intertwined here as to be almost completely indistinguishable. There is no other place where the two extremes of humanity's nature are so clearly laid bare. Furthermore, Abigail is blessed with a rare talent. Talent? You mean her aptitude as a witch? Abigail is pure and innocent. She is better suited as a medium than a witch. Lavinia had talent for it as well, but Abigail was leaps and bounds beyond her. She was everything I could have hoped for and more. Thanks to her, I am certain to succeed. So, what are you planning? Don't get me wrong, I am not making her do anything. She will do this because she chooses to. She will complete the great work that we could not, the salvation of mankind. And she will do so through great pain. It is pain that is the basis of human happiness. Nothing in the world could be more valuable. Everyone feels pain in equal measure. Without it, what you would call cease to be human. It is worth far more than love or death could ever hope to be. Abigail will be its harbinger. Tomorrow, when the courthouse opens at dawn, she will be tried as a witch. And all is going well. Many have tried to save Abigail before, but none have ever succeeded. Even I was not up to that task. That is why I invited Kiauda here again. I expect great things of you, Mr. Vane Izanagi. Great things indeed. Probably won't be much help from the gallows. Yep, you fell right for their trap, and I ended up busting out some pretty flashy spells. Sorry about that. Wait, hang on a minute. What do you mean, that batch, Carter? Don't tell me you've been repeating the last several days trying to produce results. That's playing dirty in multiple senses of the word. Have you no shame? You've been looping time to recreate history. Repeat, loop, recreate. 
What would the point of that? What would be the point of that? I have no interest in moving backward. I only want to move forward towards suffering. All I did was compress that process. I sped up the cycle of life and death. It's possible to do that within the bounds of a town, especially after I secured a source of magical energy. I tested for optimal conditions, made adjustments, and invited guests, which were an indispensable factor. So you've been repeating that over and over with no real end game to speak of, huh? No. It seems you have the wrong idea. Not one person in Salem is here against their will. Even you all met the necessary conditions. That is why I invited you. That was the guard. It seems that visiting hours are up. Hey, we're not done with your questions. Whose body is that? At this point, it's mine. I am Randolph Carter. I'm amazed how well you can see in these dark woods, Robin. I can barely keep up with you. I'm actually the son of a forest sage, believe it or not. That said, even I can't tell night from day here. Ah, there's our little albino girl. Lavinia! Uh. <laughs> Thank goodness we found you before the court uh, reconvenes at dawn. We're not here to capture you, I promise. We only want your help. No. Forget it. Uh ho Running away again, are we? For all his other faults, Frenchie never ran. <laughs> Is he... Uh, Sanson. Idiot. You're such an idiot. Thank you, Lavinia. Are you feeling better now? If you don't mind, I'd like to ask you something about your situation and how you got here. We can't bring you back to the village now for many reasons, but I hope you'll at least take advantage of the fire and Robin's cloak to stay warm. Thanks. The... The demon god pillar brought me and my family here and threatened us. I knew this Salem wasn't supposed to be here, because even the time period was wrong. But, but we couldn't run away. The demon god Pillar had us all trapped. Me, my parents, and my grandfather. We tried wagons, sailboats, none of us could ever leave. When the demon god Pillar appeared, and gave us orders. It always looked like a wriggling raven black pillar, a really grotesque creature. What did the demon god pillar ask your family to do? Nothing. Huh? Nothing? All he said was, do what must be done. We Watleys come from a line of alchemist mages. Our greatest wish has always been for the outer god to descend here. Oh, comforting. It's been a closely guarded secret for generations, but somehow the demon god Pillar knew about it. And he was very interested. I eventually understood why while I was investigating Salem. There were foreign guests here, Ones who came before us, I think we were probably the sixth ones. And I think that it used to be other people here that the demon god Pillar forced to serve him. Did you figure out, uh, figure that out from the graves in the forest? I noticed six pretty shabby looking graves there. Some of them were still empty too. That's right. That is the altar. But I still couldn't see the whole picture. I think the natives that killed Abigail's parents and the wharf and trade ships that shouldn't exist in this time were probably also guess, guess. Then Tichiba was probably one of them too. 
Abigail adored- Oh wait, that was someone else talking. That was Mash. Then Tichiba was probably one of them too. Abigail adored that woman. She always seemed special. For a time, I suspected she was actually controlling everything. But then, she was executed. Now, I think all of you and Hopkins must be the seventh guests. That's so. Well then, which of us was the uninvited one? Maybe Judge Hopkins was originally supposed to be the seventh guest? And if so, does that mean we're the ones who ray shifted here unexpectedly? Or the Demon God Pillar accounted for us as well? No, that can't be right, and that would mean this is not all going as the Demon Pillar planned. That said, I don't think there's much time left, either for us or the Demon God Pillar. Between Judge Hopkins and us, we really made a mess of things here in Salem, didn't we? So what's the, this Outer God stuff about? Is it a god like Kron Kruik that descends sacrifice and whatnot? Demands sacrifice and whatnot? No answer to that one, eh? Something doesn't add up. I don't understand why a demon god pillar would seek another divine being when he already has godlike power. He probably just gets off on twisted crap like that, or he just really likes the idea of dominating humans. Case in point, he went out of his way to recreate these sick witch trials. But would that really be enough for him to split off from Goetia? Not too long ago, Cersei passed along a message to Neza from jail, and Neza gave it to me. She said that the demon god Pillar showed up looking like Mr. Carter, and that he says his mission here is to save mankind. Carter. Apparently he's taking a different approach from Goetia, whose plan focused on storing up unimaginable amounts of magical energy. But what could it be? What are you two talking about? Are you... Kabbalists? Rosicrucians? Freemasons? I can't imagine you used to be mercenaries. Or soldiers. Oh, uh, I guess you could say we're... Stargazers. Alright. Since Senpai isn't here now, I'll tell you about the organization we belong to. Kialda. Whoa, 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 you serious about this, Mash? In exchange, will you tell us everything you know about the secret Outer God, please? I'm sure it will help us with Senpai and Cersei's trial. And then it will help save- help us save Abby from her predicament. Okay. I'll tell you. I'm already dead anyway. I tried to sacrifice everything to the Outer God. But I failed. I feared for my life, so I ran away. Because of that, my prayers never reached him. There's nothing wrong with wanting to stay alive, Lavinia. I'm sure Abby and Sanson feel the same way. Mash. Where's Abigail? Abby is being confined in the house where Hopkins was staying. I refused to leave the guard refused to leave the guards be until they put her there. That prison is no place for a young girl. Afterwards, Matahari, Neza, and I snuck over there to visit her. But we couldn't see inside, so we still don't know how she's doing. I'm worried about her fever. My family, my grandfather, started to change after we were brought here. He started to believe... He was feuding with Abigail's parents, even though he wasn't. Our perceptions were distorted in the same way. But despite that, my family's wish never changed. If anything, it made Grandfather even more eager to complete the ritual of descent. It was dangerous to do that in this village, but there was nothing I could do about it. Lavinia. Abigail followed me everywhere. It was really annoying. She wasn't like the other villagers. But my grandfather thought he hated her parents and that Abigail was hiding something. So I pretended to be friends with her. She was curious about 
the outside world. So I taught her the ritual of descent with a fake grimoire. It was always my job to catch birds and animals to be sacrificed. She was so happy playing with the six-sided star altar. She called it a holy symbol. It was our own secret game. Over time, I started to go mad myself. Memories of things I'd never seen started flooding into me. It made me feel like I had grown up in Salem. I don't even know about any comet. Sounds like it was pretty rough for you too, Lavinia. No, it wasn't. The one who had it roughest is... The Outer God is the God of the Great Gate and the Key. The six doors, up, down, left, right, front, and back, represent all possible dimensions. And this Outer God is enshrined beyond the ultimate gate, the outside of our universe, where light can never reach. Now, where does that sound really familiar? It might coincide with the fact that a certain character is named Randolph Carter after, hmm, a self-insert in someone's particular books about, hmm, what did they call them? Uh, Elder Gods. Hmm, now, where have I heard all that before? Hmm, something about beyond the stars of time and space? Hmm, really can't seem to put it all together. That's sarcasm, by the way. You guys don't actually have to plot dump that for me. But despite that, he also borders all possible dimensions and is tied to all possible things. Some know him as Suit Typhon, but in the Book of Ebon, that's been with our family for generations, the Outer God is described as the All-in-One and the One-in-All. We are officially dealing with, uh, with, uh, <laughs> congratulations, ladies and gentlemen. Fate has officially jumped the shark. We are now no longer just dealing with demon god pillars. We're now dealing with elder gods, the beings beyond time.